super fast. Okay, it looks like we have a couple of people watching. Hello, Tiffany. Tiffany's watching. <sighs> Tiffany Higgins here, and this is my husband, Sean. Hey, guys. And we are going live. Hi, Eileen. We are going live tonight, like we do every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Central Time in our group. Have your cake and eat it, too. And this group is all about helping moms and dads um, have their cake and eat it too. So that really means that you can reach financial freedom and reach your professional goals, your financial goals, but also get to be around for your kids, be the kind of parent that you wanna be, um, make decisions that you wanna make for your kids, their education um, and what you do with them on a day-to-day -day basis and not have to sacrifice your finances to do so. So we are teaching people what we have learned over the last six years since we decided to take the plunge ourselves, and we started a virtual bookkeeping business from home. Hey, Abby, congrats on joining the Academy. Hey, Amanda. Um, we just uh, started a bookkeeping business in 2015 after our third child was born. And from there, it just really took off. And let's see, I think I launched my bookkeeping business in May. And by Christmas Eve, Sean was retiring from his job to basically be a stay-at-home dad. <laughs> so we're here tonight to help you guys get the dad's perspective from this because most of the people in our academy are moms. We do have some dads in there, which is awesome. So if you're a dad and you're thinking about doing this, um, you can definitely get Sean's perspective here. And if you're, if you're a, a dad or a husband and you're wanting to see if this is going to be a good fit for your wife or your spouse, then you can also get his perspective on that as well. So um, I'm going to just go over a little bit of information about the Academy. And if you guys, as you're watching, please post some questions because we love for these lives to be super interactive and really tailored to what you guys want to hear that are actually on the live tonight. And if you're watching the replay, please uh, say replay and let us know what questions you have as you're going through it as well, because we'll always go back and answer any questions on here um, that come in later. So if you've got questions for Sean, go ahead and stick them in there. And while we're waiting on questions, we'll kind of give you a little bit of background on the Academy and our journey and um, kind of wait for some questions to come in. So, um, but we did have one question that I want to go ahead and um, address that was asked earlier today. And Leslie Roth, she asked, uh, did Sean help with the bookkeeping part? My husband might want to learn bookkeeping down the road and help with the business as well. So do you want to answer that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So Yes, yes, I did help with the bookkeeping quite a bit, actually. In fact, I think I did most of the heavy lifting uh, when it came to some of the work with that. Uh, when I left my job, uh, I was at Commerce Bank. And as Tiffany said, I left right around Christmas Eve. And I pretty much was able to plug in fairly soon uh, into the business right after leaving. And it was really, really nice because I had no idea what I was going to be doing. And bookkeeping was not something that I had any experience in uh, prior. I was mostly a mid-level manager uh, in a mailroom, actually. So not a whole lot of bookkeeping gets done there. But uh, what I'd say probably within about three months, I was handling quite a lot of the, uh, the load with the books that we had. And I think, how many clients did we have? Um, had about 35, but well, by the time I sold the business about 35 clients. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it was mostly working, uh, when the kids were napping or, uh, when Tiffany had the kids, uh, and just really being able to plug away and get some work done. And I was amazed at not how easy it was, but once you were familiar with the client, how quickly, uh, you could do a week's worth of bookkeeping or a month's worth of bookkeeping just in one sitting. And it was so nice because in the industry I was in, there were so many deadlines I always had to hit. It was, you know, UPS picks up at five, FedEx picks up at six. This was just something I could get done 
pretty much whenever, as long as the client didn't have any pressing issues. So it was a lot of fun and it was really neat watching everything kind of balance out at the end. So uh, long answer to a very short question. Yes, <laughs> yes, I did help and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's it was kind of nice too because you were we were able to like switch on and off and like rotate, so I didn't have to do all of the work all the time. Um, when I got to the point where I was selling my business, I really wasn't doing any marketing at that point. Um, this is about two and a three years in three and a half years in is when I sold my business. And we had about 30 to 35 clients. We were making a, a, almost $200,000 a year in annual, like reoccurring revenue. And um, we weren't working collectively between the two of us any more than 40 hour work week. So it was nice to be able to bring in that much money mm -hmm. off of just a combined total of one full-time job. So it was really great because at any you know, given moment, our kids were always with one of us you know, all mm -hmm. the time. And the other one was only away like part-time, part-time hours. So, and from your home, which was awesome. So did you have anything to add to that? No, I, unless Leslie has a follow-up. That was pretty much all I had. Awesome. Let's see. Tiffany says, I tried to get the extra money to join for the loan process, but I'm not able to financially get it right now. They said so. Boo. <laughs> what courses should I take to start my journey? I paid for the QuickBooks in 15 minutes today. Awesome. Thank you so much for grabbing that course. You're going to love it. I want to invest in small increments and get there as soon as I can. How do I convince my husband to invest in those small classes? I have tried different jobs and this is something I'm able to make my money back in no time. He is just worried it's another job that leads to nowhere. Oh, great. Great question. So did you want to answer that one first? Uh, I'd be happy to jump on the last half, the convincing yes. the husband part. Did you want to do the first part? Yes. Okay. So the first part about like choosing which classes. So we have four, there's four main courses that are bundled together in our, in our bookkeeping course. So if, if you, if you really just have to do the do it yourself courses and you can't hop into the Academy, which just because maybe you don't can't get loaned through the funding specialist. There's a lot of other options as well. So definitely hop on a call with us if you haven't, and we can try other things like PayPal credit, Upstart, 0% cards. A lot of times people um, will have family members that are interested in investing in them to get the business started because there is such a quick turnaround time on getting your investment back. So those are all options too. But it, if you strictly just want to do the do-it-yourself courses, um, then there are four main courses that we bundle together into the bookkeeping course. And the bookkeeping course is $997, but you can buy the four courses separately. Um, there's other courses too, but these four main courses are going to be what you need to really get started. So we've got the mini course where you learn the basics and that one's all about basic bookkeeping skills, financial statements, um, learning QuickBooks online and how to use it for multiple businesses. We have um, how to set up your bookkeeping business for success. And that shows you how to get ready for clients, like create your business, create your LLC, um, setting up your bank account, all the partner programs that we suggest you use and the back office programs to use, what to do about insurance, things like that. So that completely covers all of that. Then we have a provide amazing service to your clients course. And that one walks you through how to talk to potential clients, how to quote them and how to onboard them. And then once you've onboarded them, it also walks you through how to complete the back work and the ongoing month to month work for each client. So that really is the, the meat of it as well. And then we have the fourth course is all about marketing and mindset, how to enjoy the journey, but also how to get more clients and reach your revenue goals. So you can buy each one of those courses separately. It's a lot more cost effective to buy the bundle of the bookkeeping course if you can, um, but those are the ones that you can do in small increments. So you will probably need all of them before you actually feel prepared to get your first client, um, but you can definitely buy them in chunks and you can get those on our website, stayathomebookkeeper.com, and then you can click on bookkeeping course, learn more, and it'll take you right to that. So, okay, I'll turn it over to you about convincing husbands. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm not going to lie. When, uh, when we first started talking about me uh, quitting my job and coming to work uh, with Tiffany, 
and staying at home and all that stuff, I was terrified as well. Um, I was making fairly decent money uh, at the job I was at. And I really did not believe that we could make what we ended up making, uh, let alone just replacing my salary. And if there's any you know, spouses li listening or anyone that's just on the fence, it was shocking how quickly uh, we were able to replace my salary. In fact, it kind of hurt my self-esteem a little bit uh, <laughs> looking <laughs> back on it, um, it but, but in an awesome way. Um, there are so many things out on the internet that you see and you're just like, yeah, there's no way that's going to happen. You know, no one's going to make a hundred grand selling knives door to door and, and things like that. But when you start up your own business, there's always an element of risk. And there was an element of anxiety, uh, especially at the beginning. But as I got involved uh, with Tiffany's business and I saw what she was doing and just how quickly it exploded, I, I remember being super excited when we got our first client. And then towards the middle, it just felt like we were getting new clients constantly. And we weren't even really trying to get new clients at that point. It was just, you know, this client recommended their friend who also had a business. And before you know it, you know, that one client brought in four or five new clients. So uh, anyone that's sitting on the fence, any amount of work you put into something, you're, you're going to see a payback from it. And if you have doubt in your mind, just remember like wherever you're at now, you didn't start off there. You worked your way towards it. And it's just really amazing what uh, Tiffany especially was able to accomplish. And the fact that she was able to train me so easily to plug in and take over such a large uh, load of the day-to-day -day, uh, operations and, and the actual bookkeeping was just amazing. And it's something that I'm very, very thankful for. So hopefully that answered your, your question. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing that I would kind of add to that too, is that you don't need a whole lot of clients, no. which is great. People are willing to pay a pretty decent amount for this service. So when you offer it as a fixed package, like we tell our students to, I think a lot of people, um, if you're new to the group and you're new to the academy, you're new to being a business owner, um, especially a bookkeeping business owner, you don't understand well, how, why the heck would anybody pay us $100 an hour to do this, especially if it's so easy, like you say. Well, it's because that it's a service that every business needs and it's a service that every business wants. And so they're willing to pay for it because they see so much incredible value in what you're providing, but they also don't know really how easy it is once you actually like dig in and learn everything. They don't have time to learn it because they're busy learning things that are going to grow their business, not things that, that they need to do to just keep their business where it's at. So as you take on clients and you learn more, you get faster and faster and faster at stuff to where it's the point, like, like Sean said, we have clients where you could do all of their bookkeeping for the whole month in like an hour. And, you know, to them, they would have fumbled around with that for like eight or 10 hours and been frustrated and, and actually concerned that maybe it wasn't done right. Whereas we could get it done in an hour because that's all we do, because we, we become experts at it. By the time you get your third, fourth client, you're an expert at it because you're doing the same thing for everyone. So if you continue to price, like we suggest in those fixed price packages, your hourly rate just goes through the roof because you're getting really efficient at what you're doing and you're really comfortable with using the software and things like that. So um, let's see, Nikki says, how many clients can you feasibly take on a loan? Okay, that's a good question. And it really depends on the size of these clients. So there are some people that really like to go after super small clients. And if you do that and you're, you're getting like quarterly clients, people that make less than, you know, maybe a hundred to $200,000 a year, those are really super small clients. So the most you can probably charge them is, you know, one to $200 a month. So you're going to have a lot more of those, but if you get more clients in the two, $200,000 to $800,000 range, they're going to be more like three to $500 a month, depending on the industry. And then at that point, um, you know, you could take on a lot more. 
But basically, if you price how we suggest in the academy, you will be able to, if you want to work a 40 hour work week, you'll be able to make $250,000 a year um, with no employees. So that that can range depending on how small or big your clients are. So you may have, you know, 30 clients making $250,000 a year, or you may have a hundred. It really just depends on the size of clients and how good you are at quoting. So we really support our students in the academy a lot on making sure that they're quoting for, for the value and you're, you're getting good rates. So that way you don't have to have a million clients and only making like $20 an hour, you are going to actually make $100 an hour or more. So great question. When I was making $200,000 a year, we were working about 40 hours a week. Um, I had a lot of initial clients where I underquoted in the beginning, which is why I wasn't quite at $250,000 for that 40 hour week. Because um, I underquoted a lot at the beginning and clients typically don't leave you. So I had them for a really long time. Um, but I only had about 30, 35 clients. At, at that range. So it really, but it really depends. I had a couple of clients that were paying um, like $1,500 and $1,800 a month, but most of them were between three and $800 a month mm -hmm. clients. So did you have anything to add to that? No, I think you covered that. Uh, I'm a little long-winded. Yeah, no, 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 it's great. Okay, let's see. Okay, Tiffany tagged some people that are going to be on discovery calls. That is super exciting. You guys are going to love it. Um, Leslie, let us know if you have any um, follow-up questions to your questions or if your husband has any more as well. Uh, Nikki says, how long does it take to complete the courses? So the coursework, if you can devote at least a couple of hours a day to the courses, you will be up and ready for clients within two weeks. So the entire program is designed to really get you set up for success so you can start making money fast. If you do the do-it-yourself course alone, you'll be ready for clients um, within two weeks. You may not feel comfortable and confident in your skills to do that, um, but that's why we created the Academy because we really want people to make their money back on the investment as soon as possible. And that means a lot of times, all the time when people get new clients in the academy, they are not ready for it and they're nervous and scared and we help them through every step of the way. And they're so thankful that they just dove in and went ahead and got those clients because they learned so much with their first couple clients and then they started making money right away. And then that just really gets you excited and motivated to keep going, even though it may be a little bit scary when you've got a new skill. So, and a lot of people, I want to address this because I think you have you would have a lot to say to this, but a lot of people in the group sometimes um, mention how that maybe it was easier for me because I had my CPA license. Um, but when I branched out and started the business, you might as well have stripped me of all of my knowledge and all of my certifications because it was like stepping into a complete world of the unknown. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why I love the academy because. We've, I've been there and done that. All of the student mentors in the academy have been there and done that now. And so you have so many people to help and support you. But when I started, it wasn't like a cakewalk because I had a CPA license. It really didn't mean anything. Um, I was alone and I had to learn a lot and I went through a lot of stuff. Yes. Um, I, we still laugh about the first client that I got. And <laughs> yeah, that one was a riot. Yeah, so... I think I, I think I invoiced him like $600 to do like a, some kind of setup job for QuickBooks desktop. And I had no idea what I was doing. And I probably made like $5 an hour when it all came, mm -hmm. <laughs> came to fruition there at the end, but, and a lot of tears. So it wasn't, it wasn't easy for me to start by myself. Um, so don't think that just because I went to accounting school and, and I got my CPA license that you know, it was easy for me and hard for everyone else. It's definitely not the case, but we try to make it as easy as possible for everyone in the academy, just because you've got so much support and that does make things a lot easier. Yeah, and if I can build on that a little bit, uh, again, I had no uh, CPA, no accounting history, no bookkeeping history. And if she could teach me, this guy that worked in warehouses mostly, how to do all this, uh, you guys will be 
perfectly fine. I mean, the amount of support she gave me just in learning to do the books was absolutely amazing. And again, it's not like we never talked about what she did when I was at work. I never understood it. But the second you get into the program and you're in a client's books, everything just starts clicking uh, so much faster because you have something to relate it to. So I think that definitely helps. And I think if you go out and you, you do the courses and you start marketing, you get that client, you will learn so much from that first client that you go through and do the books on, especially with the support group, uh, kind of walking you through everything as well. Uh, I still remember the first time I had to do one of uh, Tiffany's clients and they had rental properties and money transferred from like six different accounts and the, it might as well have been uh, physics on the Big Bang Theory when she was telling me how to do it. But once she walked me through it step by step, I mean, it just makes so much more sense. So it's, it's really fun. Like I said, the, uh, the balance aspect of the bookkeeping because you there's no unknowns. You, you see it and you see where everything goes and everything makes sense at the end. And if there's something out of place, you know you did something wrong and you can work your way backwards from it, which is really neat as well. Yeah, yeah. If you make a mistake, you can always really easily change it. So yeah. it's really nice. So Kim's watching. Hi, Kim. Kim's doing so well. She went through the academy and she's growing her business like crazy. And I think, uh, I think she's actually about to buy a vacation home. So that's Ooh. really exciting. Uh, let's see. Uh, Robert, Tiffany tagged Robert. Let us know if you have any questions. Um, oh, so it looks like Tiffany said that she would love for Robert and his wife to join the academy. That is kind of fun. We do have a handful of husband and wife teams in there, which is really fun. I mean, it's, it's, it's nice to be able to share the journey, you know, with your spouse and your, or your significant other and um, be able to do things together. Mm -hmm. um, and if you did get to the point where you both wanted to work full time in the business, you can literally make a half a million dollars a year doing that. I know that that's like a stretch for a lot of people in here to believe. A lot of people don't even believe me when I say you can make $250,000 a year without employees. Um, but it's really, really true. And, and truthfully, to be honest, I actually quote like lower than a lot of other accountants and bookkeepers coached me to do. Mm -hmm. So um, that's based off, you guys are learning based off of my, my, preferences with quoting. Um, and a lot of people tell you to quote even more than I do. So um, you've got so much room to go up, but it's just really interesting when, when you're making 50 to a hundred thousand dollars a year um, for your family, it's hard to imagine breaking past that. And I think one thing we should definitely touch on is like how different our life was yes. once we did that. Yes. Um, it was, it was just crazy because when you, when you work for someone and you're an employee, you, you strive for like promotions or you go to school and get another certification, hoping that you're going to get a little bit of a raise or something like that. But you don't really ever even realize that you're kind of stuck. Like you're, you can only make more money if your boss wants you to. Um, you know, or you find a different job where maybe you're working harder or something like that. And it was just really insane how we went from like create, having spreadsheets of our budget. Like I remember I used to have every two weeks I would get paid and that 17 or $1,800 that I got after tax was like budgeted out to the penny on exactly what it was going to go to. And ever since we started our business, I haven't even budgeted once since no, then. Yeah. Um, because the money that you can make is unlimited and it's, it's such an exciting feeling. Um, did you want to add to that before I? Yeah, uh, not even just the, the budgeting aspect, but I know uh, I was very proud of my accomplishments in my career. Uh, again, only a mid-level manager, but I thought that that was a pretty big deal. And I was thinking back on it actually today. I was, I was watching YouTube, uh, I admit, sorry. Um, but I was watching YouTube and uh, Val Victorian gave a speech and he was saying how he was excited for the first 15 seconds after he was told that he had made Val Victorian. 
and that the 16 seconds set in and he realized everything that he had sacrificed for that one award, right? And he had thought uh, back on all the times he had to tell his friends he couldn't hang out, all the parties he's missed, all the family activities he didn't go to because he was just steady, steady, steady. And it made me think about my time at work. You know, just because you work a nine to five doesn't mean you're only on the clock from nine to five. Usually it means you're commuting to work. I commuted, you know, sometimes an hour and a half to my job, depending on traffic, and then back and then thinking about how much time I missed with the family. Um, I worked retail at one point in time, so I missed the 4th of July like every year because I was I was working a job. And when you work from home, it's so much easier to balance your work life. And I, it's something that I am so thankful for even to this day. Like, I don't have to miss a t-ball game. I don't have to miss a hockey practice. I don't have to miss birthday parties or anything. And just knowing that alone, um, even if I had only just replaced my salary uh, and not gone you know, above and beyond uh, what we ended up doing, it would have been 100% worth it just for that. You know, if your kid's sick, you don't have to, well, sometimes I had to tell my boss, but that's just because she sits next to me, um, that I wasn't gonna be able to do something today. You know, you just pick up where you left off the next day. Uh, quality of life, I think, increased exponentially working from home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have a, a lot more options too. I mean, it was always one of my dreams to be able to travel and, you know, I used to sit and watch my boss go on two and three week long vacations. And I thought to myself, oh yeah, when I retire, I'll get to do that. Lame. Who wants to wait till they retire to be able to like have fun? That sucks. So, uh, so like exactly a year, like to celebrate one year in business, we bought a brand new car, a 2016 Honda Odyssey, and we loaded up our kids, we had three at the time and we brought our niece with us and we decided to take a 16 day vacation across the country. And I was able to like do the bare minimum so I could still enjoy the vacation. Um, but I, I worked and I helped my clients as we traveled and I was able to, you know, go all over. We went to Colorado, we went hiking, we stayed at like a cabin. Um, then we drove to Palm Springs and mission beach and we stayed there for like seven days or something like that or 10 days and then we went to the grand canyon on the way home and and then also to top that off we got back and i it was probably like within six months we completely paid off the brand new car mm -hmm. with new client work that came in so it was like i mean that kind of stuff is life-changing guys if if you if you are literally working paycheck to paycheck and you're budgeting every dime and you are like completely restricted to you know what what your boss allows you to do basically you're missing out on an incredible life um but this leads me perfectly into lydia's question did you mm -hmm. have any more to add to no that no that's perfect that? okay so so lydia says um Hi, Tiffany and Sean. Great to see you guys. What would you say is the biggest challenge of working with your spouse and kids at home? So there definitely is challenges. So, and I'll tell you the, the top, the top two, probably for me is number one, when you don't work for somebody and you work from home, you're, it's always with you. So like work is always floating around and you're, you're always on in some capacity and your kids are always with you. So it can feel like a never ending day of things to do, which as a parent, I think you feel like that to a certain extent anyway. Um, but you know, you get up in the morning and you bounce back and forth between um, working on your business, taking care of kids, working on your business, taking care of kids, and you just go back and forth. Um, it's kind of a, a, a good sacrifice, a good drawback to be able to have that flexibility, but sometimes it can be a little overwhelming mm -hmm. um, to always feel like, you know, you're working. Whereas like some, if you go to work and you've got that long commute in the car, some people enjoy that, might be relaxing, or you have a lunch break where you can go out with coworkers. When you work from home and you no longer have the whole daycare aspect or a nanny or anything like that, you actually have to work a little bit harder to schedule that stuff in. Um, so you can still have it. You just have to be more intentional about doing that. But those are the biggest challenges for me working from home um, is just always like bouncing back and forth and trying to 
to manage, you know, being a business owner and being a parent, um, but also making time in there for you to also be a spouse and be a person. Yeah. So did you want to add to that at all? Uh, I would say that the greatest challenge working with my my wife is uh, time management, kind of what uh, Tiffany was saying, it's just making sure that we do find time uh, for each other. It's, it's always really easy to find time for the kids. Uh, it's usually fairly easy to find time for work, but a lot of times it's hard to find time for uh, the two of us. And I think that's something that it was an ongoing struggle, even when, you know, we both worked at different jobs. So it's mm-hmm. not anything that's a result of working from home or working with uh, Tiffany. It's just this ever present thing of just trying to trying to find time. And I'm sure you guys know we have five kids. So there's not a whole lot of time. <laughs> and Tiffany's obviously very busy uh, most of every day. But I would say that that's uh, the biggest thing. Other than that, I think it's the greatest thing in the world. I mean, there was nothing better than coming home from a long day of work, walking in and everyone being excited to see me. Uh, it's even better not having to leave and everyone excited to see me. So yeah, having a different kind of bond with mm-hmm. the kids being there all the time. Like you even just mentioned the other day, how you remember how sad you were when you came home from work and it was like uh-huh. an hour before Boston was to go to bed because she was a baby and she went to bed, you know, early and you didn't really get to see her at all. Yeah, I was usually gone before she woke up an hour, maybe two, if it was a late night to spend with her. And it it was very different. I, I, I'm not gonna say I didn't have like a connection because obviously I did, but the connection grew so much stronger when I was around. Uh, I mean, it even got to the point where, you know, sometimes the kids would choose me over you uh, for, for small things, obviously but never would have happened otherwise. And it's such an amazing feeling, especially as a, as a dad, because, you know, not to get into gender roles and everything, but there's a lot of times I felt like I was missing out on so much of my kids' life because I thought I had to be at an office. I had to, you know, support the family and do all this. But in reality, I was just most of the time just sitting there waiting for the clock to hit five o'clock so I could leave. So this is, uh, this is so much better. And I love that it's it's not really a challenge anymore. It's just part of my day and it's so fantastic. Yeah. While you were talking, I thought of another funny um, drawback to <laughs> having this kind of uh, life. Um, one thing that we have realized that when you have a business like this and you don't have to budget and you can kind of, you know, do whatever you want with your money and change your lifestyle or upgrade or go on vacations, or you can go to the store and you can't use the excuse that you don't have any money when your kids want a toy or something. They're starting to get really spoiled. (laughs) And like, so having like kids with like rich kid mentality is like, (laughs) that's been really challenging to me. So I have to figure that out, but you know, those drawbacks, but you know, it's like what every person wants for their life. Like my older two kids, like I mean, you guys know I was on food stamps in 2010 when I was a single mom with my older two kids. And prior to that, we were living off of a $30,000 annual salary because I wanted to stay home with them so bad. Um, So, you know, they didn't get to grow up with all this stuff. And I think it definitely made them like more humble or whatever, but um, it's, it was fun, you know, and so I'm really excited now that we can provide our kids with whatever they want. Like now my 16 year old wants to play hockey and that's one of the most expensive sports you can play. It costs $1,300 just to buy a bunch of used hockey equipment. (laughs) Um, And that doesn't even count like actually playing. So that was just the stuff he had to wear. And I don't even have to think twice about it. You don't have to say, oh, I'm sorry, we, we can't do that because we just can't afford it. That doesn't even come up in your vocabulary anymore once you get to a certain point in your business. And, um, you know, even thinking like $200,000 a year might not seem like something that would make you feel that way, but it's so much extra disposable income beyond what you're, you know, normally used to having, as long as you don't 
up level your, your expenses, your monthly expenses. And like, you know, overextend yourself that, that money ends up being just so much extra cushion for you, which is great. So, excuse me. Okay. Nikki says my good friend has her own company and pays an accountant to do both bookkeeping and taxes. Is that more common? I worry more businesses are going this route. Have you run into this before? Um, yeah, and we can both touch on that. So there are times that people do prefer a one-stop shop for stuff like that. There's also just as many people equally interested in keeping things separate. It's nice to have two eyes on something instead of one person handling all of their financial affairs. I had a lot of clients that were very interested in having that checks and balances where the tax person Mm -hmm. was reviewing my work and I was reviewing the tax return because you guys will understand how taxes work once you join our academy. You'll be able to look at taxes too and kind of maybe even spot out some errors if you have new clients, but um, there's people that want both. Now, um, with that being said, if you do run into people that want to have both, we also train you in the academy to partner with tax people. So that way you can offer taxes as a service, even if you don't specifically do it in-house. So as a bookkeeper, you can facilitate that relationship and kind of be their one-stop shop, even if you bring in a tax person to kind of handle the tax work. So, and there, there's other options as well, too, if you actually really wanted to learn how to do taxes. But, you know, I personally recommend that we just partner with tax pros and develop a relationship with them. So that way, any of your clients that come to you, you can still offer that and they don't have to look somewhere else. But, um, but being completely transparent, Nikki, sometimes people, they do prefer to go to somebody that does both and that's okay. They're not the client for you. There's like 16 million businesses in the U.S. alone that are open every year. And I only had 35 to make 200,000 a year. So um, there is plenty of fish in the sea. So if you come across somebody that's just really adamant about going to somebody that can do both, then you just move on to the next person. Or reach out to that person during uh, tax season and see if their accountant is responding to emails or phone calls. I know that we picked up quite a few clients that were not happy with communication with their accountant that was doing both because they get slammed really hard uh, certain times of the year and they kind of go radio silent and you don't hear from them at all. And that can be very uh, stressful, especially when, you know, you're trying to get a loan or you know, you need, you're selling your business, you need your financials prepared a certain way, and you just can't get a hold of whoever's doing it. So there's pros and cons to it. But yeah, sorry, just wanted to add that because I could yeah. contribute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, tax people often get really bogged down. So um, a lot of times you'll find people that are unhappy with that, you know, duplicate relationship, and they want to spread it out to have somebody that's more responsive from you know, week to week communication. So absolutely. Great point. Um, Kelsey just joined the Academy. Yay. Congratulations. She's super excited to get started. She's adding a little one to the family in August. Congratulations. That's really exciting. Any advice on how to juggle an infant and running a bookkeeping business? (laughs) Oh my goodness. It's, this is totally yours. You take this one. Okay. Well, if you have anything to add, I will. So, um, we do have um, Samantha Lawford in the Academy. You definitely need to connect with her. And she also did a live not too long ago um, in here about juggling her business because when she started her business, she had a toddler at home and she was pregnant. She actually went into labor at a client's office, um, which was really, really exciting and interesting. Um, but you know, what's great about running a bookkeeping business when you have an infant is that you can do this work at any point in the day. So I, when I started my, my business, my um, daughter, Boston was six months old and I took her with me to networking events. And I just, I did stuff from my phone and the computer, you know, it's great at this age because they don't necessarily require a lot of like direct attention. They're happy if you're cuddling them and feeding them and, and, you know, playing with them and they sleep a lot, especially in the beginning. Um, so until they start like walking around, it's, it's not as hard to get your business going. Um, so I would just recommend, you know, 
working whenever you can, when you're cuddling with them, when you're feeding, if you're going to nurse, you know, when the twins were born, oh my gosh, it was so funny. I had one of those uh, breast friend pillows, I think is what it was called. Like table thing that set and wrapped around you. And I had both babies sitting on there and I was nursing and I was typing on the computer like this. So that's what I did. And, you know, they were up at three o'clock in the morning. Um, We we were doing shifts for a while, six hour shifts so that I could sleep like decent chunks. And um, during that, my shift was like midnight to 6 a.m. or something like that for a while. And that's when I worked. So it's awesome because you can, you know, you can work at any time during the day. You can get anything done whenever you want. Um, I wouldn't recommend calling or texting clients in that (laughs) that time frame, but you can even send emails. You can even send them where you can schedule them to go out at 8 a.m. if you don't want it to, you know, ding them at three o'clock in the morning, but, uh, there's, there's lots of, lots of ways around it, lots of flexibility. So, um, Kelsey, if you want any more specific ideas or uh, us to go off, um, in detail on any of that, let me know what, what sparked your interest there. Did yeah. You have anything? And if you want a lot of attention at a uh, networking meetings, you, you bring a baby because you don't have to approach anyone. Everyone comes to you and asks you questions. It was phenomenal. Boston was infamous at every one of those networking events everyone loved her so mm-hmm. she kind of became a the mascot of whatever group it was it was the cutest thing mm-hmm. so that was fun yeah yeah people want to do business with people that they can relate to and you know most people have families so they they like to get to know you and they and they like to see that you have a family too and you're more than just a business you you know care about them so uh Josie says Hi, Tiffany, when did you sell your bookkeeping business and why? Oh, great question. I sold my bookkeeping business in January of 2019. And there was a couple of different reasons why I sold it. I wanted to, well, I had been, had various people mentioning to me all the time that get, going into a niche is so much more profitable. And even though I was making really great money, you know, sometimes you just keep striving for, you know, see, how push it. How far can you go? How far can you go? And how much can you, can you do? How much can you grow your business? And I, I, at that point in time, I really didn't have a good grasp on how I was going to hire employees and manage a team. And there weren't any coaches out there at that point that I had in my back pocket to show me how to do that. So I decided since I wanted to go into a niche instead of like transitioning and then maybe letting all my old clients go, I thought, well, I'll just sell my business and then start up a new business in my, in my niche and my specialty. And, uh, and the other, the other reason was to that juggling the business and having five kids and no coach and nobody to support to support us really we were we were constantly going in it blind and alone it got a little overwhelming and i don't if you guys can relate to this i nursed the twins for two years and they never slept through the mm-hmm. night not once so i was probably going through a little bit of uh postpartum depression slash craziness <laughs> um so i'm totally just open book and being completely honest here that that's part of the reason why I sold it too. Um, and I started up the new accounting firm going into the cannabis industry being like in a niche specific. And that's one reason why I don't recommend that people do that because it was a lot harder to grow and it was a lot slower to grow. Um, so I didn't really enjoy doing that. Um, and being in a specific niche, I missed my old clients. I missed the difference, the different industries and the dynamics of having multiple um, types of people that I was working with. I missed that. Um, but I did, I did hire someone to come in and help me grow the cannabis business because I had big goals for it. And she had come in one day and said that she had a five month old at home and she needed more money, but she couldn't come in and work with me more because she didn't want to be away from her kid, which makes total sense. Right. And so she said, just want to let you know, I'm going to start my bookkeeping business from home. And, and so that's what actually gave me the idea because I thought, well, she doesn't have hardly any experience. So I kept thinking to myself, you know, who's she going to ask questions to if she gets stuck? Like, where is she going to figure it out? And then I thought she's going to ask me because I'm right here. And that's perfect. That's like perfect for her. She's going to be able to grow an awesome business because she's going to have my support. And that's what kind of got 
the whole community to have your cake and eat it to your community was born um like literally from, yeah. from that so even though i i if i could go back i probably wouldn't have sold my business i would have found a coach to help me build a team which is now what i offer in the mastermind because i do know how to do that <laughs> now really effectively so um but i i wish i would have done that but yeah so hopefully that answers your question did you have any Thing to say to that? No, no, I think you touched on everything on that one. Okay. Uh, Tiffany says, what does a typical day look like as a, let's answer this as like a bookkeeping mm -hmm. um, business owner. So do you want to? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like I said, I, I was doing a lot of bookkeeping anyway. So most of the time it was, you know, I woke up, I fed the, it was probably just the one kid at that time, uh, fed her got her started on something. Uh, usually it was, you know, coloring, playing outside, getting her situated for the day. And then just periodically throughout the day, it'd be like an hour here. And I'd go through and I do clients one through five. And then I would stop and I'd go back and it was time for lunch. We'd play outside for a bit. And then it was time for a nap. Well, that was two hours. Then it was clients six through you know, 15 or whatever it was. And then I would come back when she woke up, we would do, you know, dinner, we'd continue playing, we'd read books. And then it was time, you know, for a bath, she'd go to bed. And then I spent an hour at night and did, you know, the rest of the clients. And then whatever I didn't get to the next day, I just picked up where I left off. Most of the time, I hardly had to do that daily. Um, like Tiffany said, uh, once you get into the group, you know, a new client sometimes is a lot more work up front, but once you've had that client for a couple of months, I mean, I could pretty much do a week or two weeks for certain clients in an hour or less. So it was just, uh, that time management, trying to work out a schedule and just make sure that everyone got touched at least one time a week if I could, but I never had to miss out on anything because she was pretty young. She was six months to a year during that time period. So there was a lot of downtime, there was a lot of nap time, and I was able to knock out pretty much everything while she was asleep. And the rest of the time it was just plain. It was fantastic, actually. Like I said, I, I missed out on nothing. And I don't know if that's like a great, what does a typical day look like? Cause it's rather open-ended, but every day was a little different. Uh, we were in uh, Lee Summit. So I remember going to Paradise Park for just hours uh, most days. And then she would take a really long nap afterwards <laughs> and I would knock out a bunch of clients and, and that was pretty much dead. Uh, did you want to take yeah, over? Yeah, I mean, one? it is, you just, like I was mentioning earlier, you kind of just bounce back and forth between, you know, your business stuff and, and family stuff, which is great. It can feel like your day, you know, you're always like working, but, but it's nice to be able to do that because, you know, if you've got a few things that you need to get done, you work on the pressing stuff for your business. And then, then if your kids want to go to the park or you want to make stop and have lunch with everybody, or, um, you want to just sit and play or whatever, um, you can do that. So it, it's just really nice and flexible. Um, and you just kind of bounce back and forth between all of it. Yeah. I know I did a lot of marketing and networking in the evenings when we were just sitting on the couch, watching TV. Mm -hmm. Like when I was pregnant with the twins, I really couldn't even barely walk. <laughs> so we sat and watched criminal minds <laughs> yeah. a lot And Boston would sit next to us and, you know, play on our tablet or reader books or whatever. And it was just what we had to do at that time because I really couldn't move a whole lot. And so those were the, the nights where I would just do like some marketing on my phone, post in Facebook groups and connect with people on LinkedIn and things like that. So it's, it's kind of cool how much you can actually even do from your phone yeah. <laughs> with it. So it's awesome. Um, I got the next one. Okay. Uh, Tiffany Ware says, uh, Kaufman says, hi. Hey, buddy. I miss you. It's his birthday today. <laughs> Happy birthday. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Happy birthday, Kaufman. Hopefully they make a trip out and see us again soon. That would be fun. Yeah. Uh, Mandy Thompson. Yep. She says, this would be even better with both of us doing it. I'm trying to talk my wife into joining me too. Yes. yes. Awesome. <laughs> so just so you know, um, Mandy, anytime we have um, like joint teams, like spouse teams and sister teams or whatever, if you've got like two people and you, or you're growing one business together, we do let both people into the academy under one um, membership. So um, that way you guys can work on it together. 
And Tanya says, I am one of Tiffany's first students and the program has grown so much, totally worth it and it works. Yes, I'm super excited. Hi, Tanya. And of course, you know, like now our kids wanna do it. Tanya's got a 16 year old that also wants to do bookkeeping and so does my 16 year old. So of course they're friends. <laughs> Um, Megan says, I had no experience, so worth it, major, major life changing. Yeah, Megan, um, Megan, you're going to have to come and do a live here soon because your life, your experience, um, your life changing experience is really awesome. I, I love listening to everything that Megan's got going on and just the opportunities and the doors that open for you when you do this is just amazing. Um, Megan's daughter is going to a private school now and she's going to be she's got her eyes set on a really awesome college and all this stuff and you know it's just teaching her her daughter um, Megan told me a really cool story last week that gave me goosebumps about how her daughter is developing this new mindset of you know limitless possibilities in life and willing things to happen to you and it's just it's so great um what your kids even learn from this journey. So um, Katie says, well, that is reassuring since neither my husband nor I have experience and we want to do this together. Both feel unsure, but hopeful. Rewatching this live with him when he gets home. Awesome, Katie. So let, let me know if there's anything specific that you think your husband might want to hear about from, from me or Sean and we'll definitely address it so he can watch it. We got a lot of comments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Leslie says, are spouses that work with you able to be in the Academy Facebook group? Yes. Yep. I think I addressed that one. Uh, Ulysses says, good to hear your husband's side. We're both trying to do this and it is hard to gain that confidence to get that first client. Yep. Ab absolutely. Everyone struggles with that at first. And um, if you're in the Academy, it's really helpful um, to really just go to the Zoom calls and lean on everybody for support. And don't forget that you get your one-on-one -on -one calls. You get unlimited calls with Megan um, for your first client and she'll walk you through every single step. So that way you look like a rock star to your client and you feel like a rock star and you get it done um, super efficiently. So um, that'll give you a lot of confidence. Nikki said, that's so true. Been trying to get promoted for four years. Yeah. Yeah. So it's hard when you're, when you have to rely on somebody else to financially reward you. But when you have your own business, you're constantly financially rewarding yourself. Um, and you're rewarding yourself in other ways too, mm -hmm. so many other ways. Tiffany says, what's the biggest piece of advice you would give someone who's on the fence with their husband quitting their job and doing the business together? Oh, that's, that's a good one. Because you were, you were terrified to quit your job. I basically had to make him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, it, it is, it's, it's, it's a very scary feeling. I mean, most people don't think of their job as a safety net. But when you're talking about leaving it and taking a step, I mean, it's a, it's a leap of faith. And uh, it was, it was, it was very scary. But like I said, it, it's been so fulfilling on so many different levels, not just the, the financial stuff, which I'm not going to lie is amazing, but just the amount of time that we've spent together. Um, you know, we're not eight hours apart at work every day. I'm not eight hours away from my children every day. There's just so many fantastic things that you have on the horizon. And like Tiffany said, you can do as little as you want. Like if you just want to, you know, make $60,000 a year, replace what you were making, or you want to work and make two hundred fifty dollars to $500,000 a year, that is amazing. I mean, that's such financial freedom and that financial, anyone that says that money doesn't buy happiness I, I get what they're saying, but you can't do that when you work. You can't spend nine hours and still be super happy with your kids while you're at work. I, it does buy a certain level of happiness and freedom that's just absolutely amazing. And I'm thankful every day that she forced me. It sounds silly now to say that she forced me to quit my job because it's wonderful. Um, but it was, it was really scary. And I'm so happy she convinced me to do it. So I don't know if I could uh, give anyone advice on how to convince their husband to do that because every person's a little different. But if you tell them that when I talk to my high school friends and they ask me what I do now and I get to say that I've been retired since I've been, what, like 35, <laughs> that's pretty awesome and amazing. I'm not going to lie. I still remember the 
uh, I introduced her to my uncle in uh, San Diego. And he asked me what I did when I said I was retired. He almost fell out of his chair. He couldn't believe it. It was, it was really fun. It was really cool. So, I mean, I think that's a, a good way to help convince someone, if not the financial reasons. Yeah. And as long as you're committed to doing what it takes to keep going, um, you know, your, your ride might not be super smooth and you may have bumps in the road from he here and there, but as long as you're committed to getting to the end result, then, then you will. So I personally, and, um, you guys all know Alyssa Dillon, um, she's really big into marketing and stuff her and I both agree on this, that sometimes you just have to jump in. And if I was going to suggest anything to anyone, I would say, just go for it, quit your, quit your job or have your spouse mm -hmm. quit your job. If you're comfortable and you're a person that's not going to give up, it's actually going to be better for you to do that because then you have all the time in the world to devote to it and you'll be able to grow even that much faster. So but everybody has to get to that point, you know, on their own. Um, but yeah, I think that also like this is actually one of the most safest businesses that you can get into. It's recession proof. It's very high paying. It's easy to do. So it's not really risky. Whereas some people, you know, might think quitting your job is risky, but not when you go into a bookkeeping business. It's the risk is so low that it's almost, I feel like, safer to be a business owner um, than it would be to be an employee, honestly. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. So, and Matt says, I have spreadsheets for my budget now. Well, get ready to throw those spreadsheets out. Hey, Shireen, how's it going? Uh, Lydia says, thank you. I trade my challenges for yours. <laughs> Wishing you a happy and healthy life together. Thank you. Uh, Ken says, how can I help my wife deal with fear and stress while starting her business and feeling like she's an imposter? Okay, that one's 100% me. <laughs> yeah, no, um, we, we did have quite a rocky start at the beginning, and it, it was a lot of letting her vent to me, uh, talking through problems, and just honestly, it's all active listening. Um, and just making sure that you understand uh, what your spouse is going through. And I feel like a lot of times I never fixed or helped anything. It was just letting her talk through. Um, I'd say 98% of the time, mm -hmm. she just needs to talk to me and she works it out on her own. Um, the, the feeling like an imposter, I heard that constantly <laughs> at the beginning. It was the cutest thing because uh, Tiffany's so brilliant in my eyes. And whenever she said she felt like an imposter, I was like, that's silly. But I know exactly what she felt. And she always was so critical of herself, I think, uh, especially when dealing with clients and in the time uh, that she spent uh, doing various tasks. And at the end of the day, she was always so proud of herself when she did manage to, to figure out something or find a, a new way uh, of accomplishing a task that saved her a bunch of time. So I think really just listening and being there and being as supportive as you can uh, is the number one way to deal with that. Tiffany might disagree. Hopefully she does not because that was kind of my go-to. <laughs> Yeah, no, I would definitely agree with that as well. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that, you know, I felt like an imposter all the time too. I mean, I, I still do a lot in this business, right? This is a, my coaching business is different than being a bookkeeping business owner. So, you know, as you, as you get more clients, especially if you start working in an industry you're not familiar with, you, you can often feel like an imposter. And if you have a question, you don't know how to answer for a client, it makes you really stressed out at first. Um, but that's why we have the account me. And I think also just like reminding her to go back to the group, go back to Megan. Well, what does Megan say about this? Well, um, what do the other student mentors say about this? And like, um, you know, just reassuring her that all those feelings are really, really normal. It's very normal to feel that way. And they probably won't go away. They'll lessen and, and, um, become out, um, 
less frequently, but they'll probably always be there, especially when you grow a business and you constantly get to like new levels. And then sometimes you have more of those feelings as you're growing. So but that's a great, really great question. And, um, you know, obviously, Ken, if you're already asking that, you're probably already doing a great job of supporting her, mm -hmm. you know, and just even noticing it. So I, I do like what you say, though, just listening and not trying to fix it because there's probably no fix. Honestly, it's just feelings. Um, but yeah, it's just reminding her that she's got so much support and that whatever happens that everyone will help her through it. So uh, Caitlin says, every time we talk about my husband coming home, our families talk about a man's identity being in his work. Can you comment on that thought at all? Sorry if it's a personal question. No, I don't think that's a personal question at all. It was something I, I struggled with at the very beginning as well. Like I said, I, I was very proud of where I had landed um, at the point in time where Tiffany asked me to uh, quit my job. And I did define myself uh, through my job. And that was a huge part of my identity and a great source of pride for me. And I remember telling uh, some of my friends and being a guy, my friends are super immature. So I won't go into too much detail about the types of things they said to me, but it was all fairly derogatory, uh, you know, Mr. Mom type of stuff. And to be honest, uh, now I find it not insulting that you asked the question, but just insulting that a guy's identity is his job or his career, because I find that my identity now is so wrapped up in my family which I think is such a better identity for me than anything I did before. Like I said, I worked in a warehouse. So my identity was managing forklift drivers and stockers, or uh, if I was in the mailroom at Commerce, I was just, my identity was mailroom. And now my identity is my beautiful wife and my five awesome kids. And I can't think of a better identity to have um, than that honestly. So I, I definitely know that a lot of people get tied up on that, uh, guys especially. And I think if you give it an opportunity and a chance, you're going to find it far more rewarding and you're going to find it so much more fulfilling just on a basic level. I tell Tiffany all the time when I first left my job, the problems that I dealt with at work were the exact same problems I dealt with at home, except the coworkers were cuter and adorable and <laughs> I, I loved them unconditionally. So it's so much better. Yeah. I think to, to kind of add to that too, though, um, I don't know that every dad would be interested in, mm -hmm. um, quitting their job and staying home, whether they are working in the business or, um, taking care of the kids. Uh, probably not every dad is going to be interested in doing that. Um, but so Caitlin, I would, I would su suggest maybe like having a conversation with your husband about what exactly does he want? Um, what does he want to be home with the kids? Does he want to be more involved with the kids or would he feel like he doesn't have an identity at that point? Um, I mean, moms go through that too. Sometimes moms, become stay at home moms mm -hmm. and then they feel like they've lost themselves. So, but um, maybe working it out to where you both have an equal active role in the business and an equal active role with the kids might be something that, you know, mm -hmm. works, but you can also set it, set down and talk about what you guys want for your financial goals too, because um, in all honesty, his job could be holding your business back from getting to the mm -hmm. point where you guys can really change your lives financially. So maybe he quits his job for a little while till you can grow your business and um, start building a team and putting a team in place. And then if he wants to, at that point, go back to work or get a different job, um, once you've gotten your business really booming, um, that could be a really great option as well. So whatever Absolutely. you do decide, it doesn't have to be forever. It doesn't have to be permanent either. So good point. Um, Nate says, can dads or husbands do this program? Yes, absolutely. We have quite a few dads and husbands in there, a few that are partnering with their wives and a couple that are um, just doing it on their own. Um, hi, Becky. How's it going? 
Uh, Kim says the single mom struggle is real. Try living with your mom and sharing a room with your teenage daughter for two years because you can't afford your own place. Yes. Yep. I totally understand. And you can, you can change your entire situation. And Kim, I think you joined the Academy, right? Um, so you should be able to turn that around in no time. Uh, Megan says, I'm a single mom. I've been there. This program changed my life in ways I could have never imagined. Uh, Nikki says, thank you for your answers. Kim says, my kids are grown now, but I do remember the struggle. Uh, Nikki says, having your own business, do you feel you can unplug while on vacation or do you need to bring your work with you? Um, when I had my bookkeeping business, I had a few clients that I offered to do like invoicing for things that are a little bit more time sensitive. Um, so I did feel that I, I needed to do that while I was gone, um, while we were on vacation. Um, but if you're doing basic bookkeeping for people, there are no such thing as bookkeeping emergencies. So if you're going to be gone a week, you can definitely completely unplug and go on vacation. You know, a, a best practices would be to just let your clients know a couple of weeks ahead of time that you aren't going to be able to, you know, be reached during that time. Yeah. But um, did you have anything to add to that? No, like I said, uh, most of the stuff I could knock out really quickly. So I always just made sure I front loaded and then back loaded. So there was, there were no issues coming back. Mm -hmm. especially if it's only a week or less. Yeah. Yeah. You can catch up all of your bookkeeping. You know, if you, if you don't do it for a week or two, you can get it all caught up typically mm -hmm. really quickly. So, um, let's see what Josie say. Thank you, Tiffany, for a previous answer. I currently work with a CPA and all I hear from other CPAs in the office is there are complaints on how bookkeepers don't do a good job at record keeping for their clients. What would you recommend bookkeepers do to improve their work. Um, I believe that a good bookkeeper needs to know a decent amount about taxes so that they can prepare the books in a way that's going to assist the CPAs or the tax people. Um, so that's one of the things that we really help with in the Academy. And um, Robin and Kaylee do a lot of our financial statement reviews. So if you're in there and you have a client and you wanna make sure that the, the record keeping is on par and that the financials are ready to go for tax season, you submit your client information for a financial statement review and we'll give you feedback because we do want you to have perfect financials for the tax pros um, so that they're ready to go. But I think that's the difference between our program and, and other bookkeepers out there that just um, know basic bookkeeping and, and data entry. We, we want you to produce tax return ready financials for your clients and we help you do that. So um, Rachel says, my husband said he would probably start helping me out down the road when I start picking up a lot of clients. That's exciting. Can't wait to have him quit his job and do this with me full time. Yeah, that's exciting. He will love it. You guys will love it. Katie says the support is super special and necessary. Um, good one, Tiffany. Uh, Ken says, thanks for the great answer. I'm doing most of what you said, but you gave me some other good suggestions. Awesome. Glad we could help. Lydia says, thank you for for this call, it's so refreshing to see the ins and outs of bookkeeping as a family business. It all just screams goals to me. <laughs> yeah, so many goals. And then you hit those goals and then you move past them and go to new goals. Uh, Katie says, my husband joined me and he said he doesn't understand how it works to get clients if we are training with people in different locations than us. I know the Academy will touch on this. Is it relatively simple to get your first client? So do you wanna answer that? Uh yeah, I mean, I can kind of jump on that one. Okay. Uh, it, it is actually relatively simple to get your first client. I mean, it doesn't usually happen like the first time you talk to someone, but it, it's a lot of, uh, I know we started off uh, networking a lot. So it was uh, BNI groups and, and other networking events and getting to know people. And like I said, before you know it, people in that group are asking you questions and it turns into you know, kind of a marketing sales pitch. And before you know it, you have your first client. And then other people in the group see that you're doing, you know, so-and-so's books. Now they're interested in doing it. And then we had people popping up all over the place. I know we had a client in Pennsylvania at one point in time mm -hmm. that we were doing the books for and people on the West coast, even, uh, it was just a matter of, of, 
that first client and it just felt like it snowballed after mm -hmm. that. And I don't know if, um, I mean, everyone always says word of mouth is like the best marketing that you'll ever have. And as you start picking up clients, they become your best resource for getting new clients. Yeah. Yeah. So also to kind of explain a little bit about marketing, um, we have an entire module in our in our academy that talks about marketing and exactly how we suggest you go about getting clients. And most of the tactics that we do suggest um, are almost all free or very, very inexpensive. We don't want you to spend a whole bunch of money doing like Facebook ads and things like that when you're starting out because it's unnecessary. Um, everything that I have in the program is exactly how I grew my business to $200,000 a year. Um, so it's, you know, tested in true and tried methods or whatever um, to get clients. So you'll be able to get walked through all of that stuff. And, um, and it doesn't matter, like some of the things you can do in person, but a lot of it's virtual, a lot of it's email, it's like connecting with people on LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, but really marketing is all about how many people can you talk to that know that you're a bookkeeper, um, or that you can tell that you're a bookkeeper in some, you know, tactful way, basically. So the more people you talk to, the more chances that you're going to land a client. And especially if you're, you know, surrounding yourself with, a, with business owners, because every business owner is a potential client. So it's pretty simple. But in the academy, you'll be training with people that are all over the country. We even have people in different countries. We have Canadian students, UK students. Um, I think we even have a student from New Zealand. Um, in addition to the U.S. So you'll be training with people um, all over the world uh, in the academy and picking up clients from all over the country. So we do this all virtually. And um, if COVID did anything positive for us, it is helping everybody to be more comfortable with hiring people virtually and finding virtual clients. So it's, it's even easier than ever now to uh, find people without leaving your house. And Chelsea in the academy, and you can watch her um, student testimonial from um, about a month ago, but she has she had a daycare business where she was babysitting kids at her house from like 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. every single day. Plus she had her own kids to watch as well. And she grew her business so fast just from nap times when all the kids were there over the last six months and now she doesn't even have to do it anymore so she no longer has a daycare business and has completely um relying on her bookkeeping business for their family's income now i think she said she even surpassed what her husband was bringing in so um pretty exciting and that was only in about six months since she yeah, launched fantastic. her business so really exciting um let's see Shane, uh, which program would you recommend for someone who has experience in bookkeeping and QuickBooks but doesn't have their own business yet? Um, if you're really unsure, you can definitely book a call with us, but I would still highly recommend that you um, enroll in the Bookkeeper Academy. I was a CPA, had experience working for a CPA firm, but what we provide in the academy would have made a huge difference for me in my business just for emotional support, but also help with every other aspect of the business from from marketing to technical bookkeeping questions when you get a client in an industry that you've never worked in before, to marketing help, quoting help. People always underquote themselves. When you've got support and you've got people there, you know, to help you quote, then you usually do a lot better job at it, especially in the beginning. Abby says, I feel weird asking my current clients for referrals. Like maybe they think I won't have time for their books anymore or something. Did you find your clients felt like that at all? Um, no, absolutely not. I know exactly what you're feeling. Um, and you can, you can't control your thoughts and feelings, but you definitely can ignore them. And that is one you need to ignore. Um, ask your clients for referrals. It's, a great idea. Ask them for feedback, ask them for a testimonial, ask them for referrals. And when you get testimonials, share that crap everywhere. <laughs> Abby, you are awesome at what you do. I know you are. And um, you definitely deserve to, um, you know, grow your business because you're doing such a great job for people. And people are actually really willing to help you mm -hmm. because they, they appreciate what you're doing for them. So definitely ask. That's your goal for tomorrow. You have to do that tomorrow. 
Chelsea says, haven't surpassed my husband's yet. Okay, but making over double I was babysitting and getting close to making more than my husband. Awesome. Congratulations, Chelsea. That's so exciting. All right, guys. Well, um, we've been kept you guys on here for a really long time. Thanks for hanging on with us. If you guys think of other questions, um, feel free to post them and we'll, we'll be back to answer them later. And um, thank you guys so much. And do you have any closing remarks? No, I can't really think of anything. Thank you guys so much for letting me be on. It's so nice being uh, uh, more involved again uh, in the community. So hopefully I'll see you guys again real soon. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Have a good night, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.